how do I convince my client to use Webflow or indeed any tool for that matter? Now, the answer to that question isn't what you think it's going to be, but let's dive in anyway. To convince your client to use a specific type of tool or whatever it is, um, I think it starts with two main philosophies. One of those things is empathy and the other one is strategy. The empathy really is the foundation for, for how you go about doing that. And that really is to desperately want to understand what their issues are or, or what their sort of current landscape is with regards to their current tool. You know, whether that's WordPress, whether that's Oracle or something like this, deeply understand what it is that makes them tick about that particular tool or not tick for that matter. And with this desire to seek empathy, you can begin to use what we call digital strategy or a strategic process in order to understand factors that, that will dictate whether you can convince your client to use a particular tool. Now, we do it before any project that we start. We have our set of tools that we use that we feel like um, suit a lot of projects. You know, Webflow is quite good for that. Uh, Next is quite good for that. That's our kind of go-to things, but we're always open to new tools and we're always open to new challenges. But regardless, if you're starting out and it's a greenfield project, I would deeply implore you to sell digital strategy. Now I have a episode on that, uh, which you can go and watch here, but the process of not only understanding what the business goals are of the client, uh, irrespective of the website, but also what the business goals are of the website itself, also the users, and in this case, the technical the technical infrastructure that they need to apply with, and then any kind of legal and, and, and whatever. Through this process, I feel like Personally, in my company, we ask the questions that enable me to say, we need to go with this tool or we need to go with that tool. But there's no good convincing someone they're going to, they should use a particular tool just because you like it, because their wants and needs are very, very different to yours. And that's where that empathy aspect really shines through. But I realize that it's not going to be the case that you're going to potentially be already in a, com uh, a company and they're using a tool that, that you feel like is not right for them or whatever. So in these sorts of circumstances, I still think the process of digital strategy, whether it's this, you know, our workshops take up to six hours to actually do, there's no reason why you can't take that and shrink it down and say, call it like an audit, a technical audit. And it's approaching it in a way where it's not just a designer or a developer nipping at heels, just wanting to use a tool that they themselves want to use. It's approaching it in a sympathetic and empathetic way that has the client's best interest at heart when doing this audit and in this way you can invite a lead a c-suite member if you're that close to them a manager or something like that and explain to them that you feel like that, w that you might not be using the right tool for the right job in that you can introduce the idea of a sort of technical audit and this is very very common whether you want to change tools or whether you want to do any type of um, assessment on, say, a new library you want to use. A technical audit is a very common practice to assess things. And you can introduce the idea of saying, I'm going to want to do a technical audit. And that will involve then um, interviewing certain members of the team to understand their perspective, understand their challenges. That's very, very specific and understand what they like about their current tool and what they potentially dislike about their current tool. And you can pile all that information together to then come to your own assessment. And you need to step outside of yourself for this assessment. Look at the data as objective as possible and see where, where, the, uh, where the holes are and where you feel like Webflow or another tool might actually slot into those things. Now, three big categories that you want to try and cover. Now, I can't tell you what questions will resonate the answers will resonate with you, but I can say the, the sort of three categories we're looking at is efficiency, and this could be, um, you know, how fast or slow work gets done with one tool versus another one. It could be process as well, like are, are there multiple steps in getting, say, something to live? Is there is there a review process or something like that? And financial, 
And this is really where it all comes down to. These are the terms that your employer or your team will understand. It's not going to be it's easier to do design on or they're not going to understand these very fluffy terminologies. They understand strategic and financial gains with regards to a tool. You might look at tools like Oracle, uh, Salesforce, and they are without a doubt very, very expensive, very, very clunky. But the efficiency gains or the process gains in the support mechanisms around it. Now, I'm not trying to sell Salesforce or anything like that, but the gains might exist in places outside of the tool. They're happy to spend, you know, £20,000 on a developer implementing a small feature because the gains aren't lost or gained rather in the, the developer's time or, or whatever. The gains are won because if that system goes down, it saves them millions. So rather they'd rather pay £20,000 to have something menial done rather than spend millions if a system was to go down. And that's the sort of mentality they, they operate in. So you need to approach your questioning with that kind of mentality and discover ways where there's leaks in efficiency, leaks in productivity, or leaks in money, basically. And if you can approach it in those sorts of ways, then you can introduce the idea of Webflow being the right tool for them. Or you might come to a completely different conclusion. I would, I would implore you to challenge your own assumptions and be open to discovering new things that you might think, well, actually, do you know what? Web Studio is a better tool for that, or Wix Studio is a better tool for that. And this is where your, you know, with your experience and things like that, you can reach into your tool belt and start to pull out ideas and things like that. And, and that's what I personally love about strategy and um, auditing a company and stuff like that. I, I try and go in with a completely objective mind, unobjective, objective, unobjective, objective mindset in thinking what juicy nuggets of gold can I discover here? And, and what challenges might I face that are completely outside of the realm of the initial conversation whatsoever. I get off on that. I don't expect everyone to get off on that, but that's just the approach that is necessary to convince your client, your customer, whoever it is, to consider a different tool. And you present, you can present that case then and say, this is why I think we need to go with this tool because of X, Y, and Z. And then it's just a case of presenting that and seeing if they're going to go with it. But be open to hearing criticism, um, open to be hearing challenges to certain things or new information to certain things. And just listen and observe and think objectively about that. So that's my answer to how do you convince someone to use a certain tool or X, Y and Z. You need to gain an empathetic mindset and do your own due diligence and f discover and find out where the holes are in these financial uh, process or efficiency capacity that the tool you recommend solve. So I hope you like this one. If you want to hear more about this sort of stuff, then hit the subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. If you have certain challenges, I want to hear them, uh, maybe to incorporate in another video similar to this. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, happy no coding.